Secretary and Deputy Mick Wallace, you are sharing two minutes in your initial statement. Thank you. Uh, uh, Minister, uh, Saudi Arabia has been elected to the UN Commission on the Status of Women by the Economic and Social Council. The UN itself describes this commission as the principal global intergovernmental body exclusively dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of women. The executive director of Geneva-based UN Watch has said that electing Saudi Arabia to protect women's rights is like making an arsonist the town fire chief. It's absurd, they said. We know that five European countries voted for Saudi Arabia. We know that Belgium voted for Saudi Arabia due to a leaked cable. In your statement today, Minister, you said Ireland has a very strong record on promoting the rights of women and girls at the United Nations, commanding trust and respect across the UN membership. It's an interesting statement, Minister, given that last year the UN Human Rights Committee ruled that Ireland's laws that prohibit and criminalise abortion violated the human rights of Amanda Mellet. The committee ruled that Ms Mellet was subjected to discrimination and cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment due to Ireland's abortion laws. The same Committee Minister on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women has called for independent investigation to Ireland's mother and baby homes and Magdalene laundries and said victims should get appropriate compensation and official apologies. We are probably not the best to be throwing stones at anyone, but I still think, Minister, that Saudi Arabia are in a different league to us all. And you would struggle to find any country in the world where women are treated so poorly. Right now, Minister, given your statement, anyone looking at it, and I'm sorry, but the majority of the people of Ireland suspect that diplomacy and trade interest have won out and that human rights has lost. Maybe this is not true, Minister, but it would be good if you would clarify it so that we would know the truth about the matter. Deputy Thank Daly. you. Uh, thanks, Cam Corl. I'm slightly surprised that Minister Ross hasn't stayed because he's telling the airwaves that uh, he wants to know what the vote was, and I think it's utterly shocking if a Cabinet colleague doesn't know. Are we to say now, in whose name and on whose authority was Ireland's vote made? Because as Deputy Wallace said, the UN Commission on the Status of Women is the principal global intergovernmental body exclusively dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and empowerment of women. And a decision has been taken to allow Saudi Arabia sit on that body. A country based on male guardianship, which forbids women from obtaining a passport, from marrying, from travelling without the approval of a male relative. Uh, if they try and do that without the approval, they can end up in prison. They can't get out with the same, without the same person's permission. In 2002, Saudi morality police blocked the rescue of a girls' school where a fire was taking place because the girls were not wearing headscarves and black robes. Fifteen young women died. The government enforces sex segregation in virtually all workplaces except hospitals and fines businesses that don't comply. In food outlets, men and women stand in separate lines. In many public buildings, women are not even allowed to enter. And in most places where they're segregated, women have to sit down the back. And as one Saudi woman said, the decision to allow this oppressive regime to join a commission designed to empower women makes me feel personally violated and invisible. It is demoralising for us. It sends a message that for the international community, Saudi wealth and power are more important than women's lives. Minister, you can't be hide, hide behind a spurious precedent. This situation is outrageous oh, right. and people have a right to know how Ireland voted. Minister Flanagan, four minutes. Thank you, Cahir. Look, um, I'm very conscious of the debate here in Ireland and indeed elsewhere in Europe about the outcome of last month's election to the UN Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, I'm a strong believer in equal rights of women. I support the role of the Commission in addressing questions of gender equality. As set out in our foreign policy review, the Global Island, Ireland is committed to advancing gender equality. Ireland played a key role in the establishment of UN Women, the UN body which promotes gender equality and which provides administrative support for the Commission on the Status of Women. Ireland took up a seat on the Commission at the conclusion of this year's session for a four-year period up to 2021. 
we will chair the annual sessions in 2018 and 2019. During the term on the Commission, Ireland has pledged to work to strengthen the voice and functioning of the Commission. Next year, the Commission, under our leadership, will attach particular priority to achieving gender equality and the empowerment of rural women and girls in particular. In 2019, our priority will be to advance equality of access to public services. I want to secure agreement on these critical issues under the Irish Chair. In order to do this, we must work closely with all UN member states and civil society in order to deliver the strongest possible outcome for women and girls. I wish also to point out that Ireland has strongly supported equal opportunity across the United Nations. In this regard, the Government was very pleased that a member of the Irish Defence Forces, Lieutenant Colonel Mary Carroll, was last year appointed the first Irish woman in command of an Irish contingent in the UN Disengagement Force in the Golan Heights. With regard to UN elections, Ireland's approach very much reflects those of other countries at the United Nations, and it's an important part of how international relations are conducted. Since 1947, at the United Nations, the rules of procedure for General Assembly elections provide that they are held by secret ballot. We do not publicly disclose our voting intentions or our voting decisions. That is normal diplomatic practice. It's widely considered a fundamental aspect of the conduct of sensitive international relations. It would be very damaging to Ireland's ability to conduct international relations successfully if we were unilaterally to move away from this established practice. It would be irresponsible to abandon a practice that has been in place for over six decades, observed by all previous governments, and that is grounded on protecting and promoting the values of small countries on the world stage. This is not a practice that is specific to Ireland or to elections for the Commission on the Status of Women. It relates to any UN body, and I'm not aware of any member state which as a matter of practice publicly reveals how it votes. It allows for the good functioning of the United Nations, which is made up of member states of very different views and very different political backgrounds. There are many countries in the world with which we have important policy differences, including in the area of human rights. The United Nations provides us with an important forum to discuss these differences. Our membership and leadership on the Commission on Women will provide us with such an opportunity with such an opportunity. We will take up that opportunity and we will do it to very good effect. Ireland's engagement on human rights at international level enables us to reaffirm our commitment to the universality, indivisibility and interrelatedness of all human rights, to accountability for human rights violations and abuses and to the protection of those, including women and girls, who are most vulnerable and marginalised. Deputies, one minute each. Uh, Thank you, uh, Minister. This Saudi Arabia is engaged in genocide in Yemen and, is, and has caused a humanitarian disaster. And we have still continued to do trade with him. So you might forgive us for suspecting that you might have actually voted for him on this occasion. Minister, only two weeks before your trade delegation landed in Saudi Arabia, the Saudi ambassador to the US, Prince Abdullah al Saud, was asked if Saudi Arabia will continue to use cluster bombs in Yemen. His answer was short, but it conveyed quite a bit about the Saudi administration. He responded by saying, this is like the question, will you stop beating your wife, before he let out a big belly laugh. Prince Al Saud compared Yemen to the wife of a Saudi man and seemed to find the idea preposterous that either should stop being punished, physical abuse in the case of women, and cluster bombs in the case of the people of Yemen. You say, Minister, that Ireland support equality of opportunity. But the people of Ireland would like to know, did you support the opposite on this occasion? Because until you tell us, until there's openness about your decision making, and this is not a normal situation, Minister, the people would like to know the truth. Thank you. You're not going to get away with this one, Minister, and your answer here, frankly, is wholly unacceptable. And Irish people are absolutely outraged at a country which is infamous for the subjugation of women being given a position 
on this body. Now, we know, of course, you have history on this. You told us last year that you were delighted to go to Saudi Arabia to strengthen our economic, political and cultural ties with this key priority market. And it would appear from your response that markets are more important, actually, than human rights, because there was no precedent in Belgium's case, a small country that was able to acknowledge how it voted. And in actual fact, your remarks here today tally with what the Taoiseach said when he talked about this state applying moderation in the Gulf. It's a matter of public record that Saudi Arabia has committed war crimes in Yemen, dropping cluster bombs. Four million Yemeni women and children are in a state of malnutrition, a country with public beheadings, floggings for crimes like blasphemy or losing the faith, a country that funnels billions into the hands of ISIS. Minister, people have a right to know, and the truth will out on this one, so you might as well come clean sooner or later. What way did Ireland vote? Minister, minutes, Mr. Hirlik, I did, I did visit Saudi Arabia. I had the opportunity of meeting with my counterpart. Uh, I availed of the opportunity to raise human rights issues and in, and in particular the status of women and the issue of women's rights and the importance uh, of equality in society. I can I say the United Nations at all levels, including the Security Council and the offices of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and the UN Under Secretary for Peacekeeping Operations, conducts its most sensitive work in confidentiality. As I've said, this is fundamental to the effective operation of an institution which we uphold and which we support. I believe in dialogue in the matter of international relations and in the conduct of international relations. That's why I visited Saudi Arabia. As I've said, I've said it's fundamental to the effective operation of an institution like the United Nations, that matters of sensitivity are carried out in confidence. Indeed, it's fundamental to the operation of relations between states. Ireland does not propose to turn on its head a convention that has been in place since 1947. I want to again acknowledge the very strong support there is in this House for gender equality and the protection of women's rights, which lies at the root of the discussion we're having. In fact, I'm a former Vice Chairman of the Women's Rights Committee, the only man ever to hold such an office uh, in this eructus. I have a very strong record on promoting the rights of women. Ireland has a very strong record at promoting the rights of women and girls at the United Nations. In fact, it's widely accepted that we're a leading voice in this field. As I mentioned, and as I mentioned earlier, we will be chairing the Commission on the Status of Women over the next two years. The outcomes of that commission carry considerable moral force. Reaching consensus on subjects related to gender equality empowers advocates for the human rights of women and girls globally. This gives them a voice and a tool to hold governments to account nationally on commitments made globally. In this way, the commission has an important normative role in achieving gender and global equality. <coughs> As I said earlier, Ireland will take the opportunity to move forward the gender equality agenda during our term on the Commission. And as she prepares, I say this in conclusion, as she prepares to assume her role as Chair of the Commission on the Status of Women, which has been referred to by the Deputies, I am happy to ask our incoming Ambassador to the UN in New York, Geraldine bourne to engage with the Oireachtas Committee on Foreign Affairs regarding Ireland's ongoing work at the United Nations on the specific matter of promoting the rights of women and girls. Thank you. We move on.